Welcome to the Libra Lounge with Keisha podcast. Um, hello, old friends. <laughs> it has been about a good two months since I've been on the mic. Uh, so let's just get, get you guys up to date on some of the shit that's been going on. Um, okay, y'all remember I almost died of COVID. You remember that was in January. And then things just went downhill from that. I, I think which a doctor told me I, I had long COVID, okay? But then, y'all know I always be trying to die on the cool. Uh, but I, 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 I ain't got nothing to leave behind anybody. So then, like, right when I'm about to die, I'm like, maybe I should not die, collect some more coins so I can at least leave a good life insurance policy, leave a little bit of cash to my family and all that. Because right now, they ain't going to they ain't gonna get shit but sushi to toy poodle right now if I die. Um, so then I, I, I just was sick, 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 sick. And I assumed that it was just like a really, 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 really bad lupus flare up. But when I say sick, I was spending probably how many hours a day do you think in bed? Uh, when you should have been awake? Yes. You're probably spending six to seven hours in the bed every day yes. during, during waking hours. Yeah. And quite miserable. So I couldn't hold anything down. Um, I would eat, immediately throw up. I would drink something, immediately throw up. I couldn't shit. Uh, my hair started kind of falling out. My breath was horrible. It was just, I was just sick. But I, I'm just laying there for a month thinking it's like, man, this is like a really bad lupus flare up. Until I totally fucked up Mother's Day dinner. Um, <laughs> James took myself along with my mother-in-law and my mom to this really nice restaurant. And uh, y'all, I just at the fucking ass in front of all them white people. I mean, throwing up, about to pass out, pissed all over the bathroom floor. And that's when my mom and James were like, you're going to the ER. And that is when we found out what was really going on. My gallbladder was filled with little bitty baby gallstones that were like sent to earth to try to destroy me. But I will say this, be careful what you wish for. Cause I was like, Oh God, I really need to lose some weight. Well, I lost it. <laughs> I lost about 20 pounds sitting around in the bed. Cause these gallbladders were just like, they were like little gremlins and I think they kept multiplying. <laughs> like the, the surgeon actually did not realize how bad they were until he went in. Cause the motherfucker act like he wasn't going to give me the surgery until I told him in that strong black woman voice, I'm not leaving here till you do something. And uh, that's when they went in and he told James, oh, yeah, it had to come out, her gallbladder. It was just so many small gallstones that I couldn't even pick those up on the ultrasound. So needless to say, I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling good. I'm, I just I look good. I feel good. I smell good. I can talk to people without the rank breath. It's just like a, I'm a totally, totally new person. So therefore, here we are. With the newest episode of the Libra Launch with Keisha. Producer James, is there anything we'd like to say to the folks? Uh, welcome to episode 136. 136. And hey, y'all are still listening to this, huh? And more people listen every time. Okay. Yeah. We're on the charts in several different countries. Name a country. Uh, let's see. We've been in Australia. Shrimp on the Bobby. Are you going to do that for every place? Yes, I, I am. Ugh. Okay. Uh, New Zealand. Who got you to a paper? Ha! Would you not do a fucking haka? It was a Maori chant. Okay, so what's another country? Uh, Great Britain. Cheerio. Germany. Ooh, Afwedazine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sauerkraut. <laughs> that German enough? Why do you be naming food? Because I'm fat, <laughs> and that's what I like. It's food. Mexico. Was uh, that good? Yeah, I was. I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> I would have taken a Speedy Gonzalez impression. Uh, that was. No, that wasn't. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah. And um, let's see. The last one that I even want to hear you try. Okay. Um, where was it? Oh, uh, France. Parlez-vous français? What? Parlez-vous français? Okay. Uh, macaroon. Croissant. 
I think that was pretty damn good. Liam the cat is staring at me like, bitch, if you don't turn that mic off and stop right now. <laughs> okay, well, we've got lots to talk to, and I've got a fantastic interview for you guys later on. I'm interviewing the star of both Love During Lockup and Love After Lockup, Indy. And I'm so excited to get all up in her business. I have so, 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 so many questions and I just can't wait. Okay, so if you are a friend of the Libra Lounge, you know what time it is. It is time for The Gap. We know she has a really big mouth, which sounds kind of dirty. And that's probably true too. Let's gossip The Gap with Keisha. All righty. So on May 13th, Rihanna, Riri, Rihanna, however you want to pronounce her name, gave birth to her first child, a baby boy with ASAP Rocky. And for the majority of you guys, you're like, that was an ASAP ass pregnancy because it was like she announced that she was pregnant and then boom, she had the baby. But Rihanna had to be a good seven months when she came out with that photo, letting the world know she was pregnant. Oh yeah. You could see Billy. Yeah, and here's the thing. So from that point on, so many things happened. Okay, so we've got Rihanna's pregnant. Then there was the evolution of Rihanna's belly. Like, goddamn, y'all know that I dove Megan Marvel, uh, Markle, Megan. I don't want to be Black Markle, uh, a grave because she kept rubbing on that belly when she was pregnant with their first kid. But uh, basically, Riri saw her do that and said, oh, hold my beer. Because that belly, that belly been to every country. That belly been to every award show. That belly, that belly. We should have named that belly because it was always out. First, it was cute. But then it was just like, Brianna, Brianna, we, 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 we know you're pregnant. Uh, everybody knows what a pregnancy belly looks like. You don't have to have it on full display, but you need to shave a little bit of that hair right there on that line, that pregnancy line. I see a little bit of few scrag stragglers right there. Just get those. So, you know, so she announced that she was pregnant. You know, uh, then she started hitting the scene, making a lot of appearances. Then ASAP Rocky, who, if someone came and offered me a million dollars right now and said, name an ASAP Rocky song, I still be poor because I have absolutely no idea what songs he's like. It, it's just I've never heard of him. Yeah, I mean, I'd heard of him, but I really heard of him when he started dating Rihanna. <laughs> I, I know that sounds god awful, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm 42 years old. I don't think I'm in the age group that his music. I mean, his music. I from some of the lyrics that I saw are for the young and dumb, most definitely. Um, so. <laughs> I, I saw somebody uh, is the little line that said he from him dating Rihanna he has picked up a new thing called coochie clout. Oh yeah, almost <laughs> definitely. I mean, you fuck Rihanna and you got a career. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your career was based like Rihanna's pussy bought you your career. Thank you, Rihanna's pussy, and then you impregnated her. That was a sad and a funny occasion because the day she announced that she was pregnant, Chris Brown and uh, Drake stopped following her <laughs> on social media. Can you say that you are fucking jealous any other way? I'm like, y'all had y'all's opportunities, but uh, I guess ASAP was ASAP to the egg. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so we get the pregnancy announcement. We start seeing a lot more Riri. Riri's makeup line starts selling in Ulta, and then boom, ASAP Rocket gets picked up at LAX on gun charges. And it's like, damn, you really can't ever just have a good thing going, can you? You know what I mean? And it was a surprise arrest. They had no idea that they were going to be at the airport waiting for them. But I mean, when you, Rihanna's kind of baby daddy, you going to get out the next day. And I'm willing to bet Rihanna's belly was on full display when she went up there to bail your ass out too. There's just <laughs> no way that it wasn't. Um, but we're all happy for Rihanna. We can't wait to see the baby. We can't wait to hear what he's saying. What do you think the name is going to be? Cause you know she's uh she's from the islands like she's and she's really big about her island culture. I really hope it's just Bill. <laughs> I hope it's something so. Simple. Oh, you know what? You know Rihanna's real name is Robin Rihanna. Yeah. What if she names him Robin with an I? Hers is Robin with a what? Y. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean that would be pretty simple. What if she named him too too fast? <laughs> <laughs> to go along with the dad's what name. We call him ASAP Baby. 
ASAP Junior or ASAP just Junior. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm gonna, I actually, I'm gonna agree with you on this one. I pro, it's probably gonna be something pretty simple. But I'm telling y'all right now, if she names that baby Prince anything, oh, I'm done. Yeah. Riri, I'm done following you. I'm going to follow you again the next day, but no I'm going to take a break. Yeah. No prince, no king, no duke, no, like, we don't need any of those royal No, names. sir, like, <laughs> I, I know this is going to sound highly racist when I say this, but I own my blackness, therefore I can say it. Whenever black people name their kids, like, names like that, that shit just takes me back to Uncle Tom days and makes me feel like the slave owner, the overseer gave them that name. <laughs> I don't know if I go back to a Alex Haley's book, uh, what Roots. was it queen, oh, queen yeah. he named her queen so it just all when someone goes oh this is my this is my son this, his name prince and i'm like oh that sound real uh feel niggerish to me <laughs> <laughs> like, it just really does even when beyonce and jay-z named their son sir i'm just like i just don't <laughs> i don't know i just feel like every time i hear a story i'll be like missa Yes, a master. Miss, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem Nassa. right to me. Yeah, it Nassa. just takes me back to slavery days like I was a part of slavery days. It just does. I just pictured the overseer calling them, Sir, get on over here on this name. I just, it just, it's just weird to me. I don't know. Anyway, um, ooh, now talk about some petty shit. Y'all know I still follow the 16 and pregnant teen mom franchise even though each season it just gets more and more boring and it's just the repeat of the same old shit but we did get a lawsuit we had kale lowry sue brianna de jesus for defamation of character which is like the stupidest thing in the world considering they both talk shit about each other non-stop they are obsessed with one another. I just wish they would lick each other's pussies and just get it done. Because <laughs> it just says, it just, it's always something. And then one always says that she's more mature than the other one. Then that person winds up buying a treadmill and shipping it off to the other one and saying, so, yeah, Brianna De Jesus said, instead of running your mouth, why don't you just run and send her <laughs> yeah. a treadmill? Which is pretty damn funny. <laughs> But in the lawsuit, which I'm sure Kel really thought she was going to win, because here's the thing. I, I used to like Kel a lot, but Kel has a sense of entitlement and like she's the richest person in the world and just no harm to, can come to her unless it's about an abusive black boyfriend. She seems to like and welcome that right there. Well, uh, she so has a type. She does have a type and she usually gets pregnant by the type. So <laughs> Brianna De Jesus won the lawsuit. Therefore, she felt compelled to throw a I won bitch party. <laughs> Was that the name of it? Is that yes. what went on the invites? Yeah, the, not And then the decor as well. Like there would be like little uh, word art saying I won ho. Like the, 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 the desserts and things had like I won bitch. I beat you bitch. And then she invited all these people who the majority of these people flew out of their home states <laughs> to go to this party where from what I saw, every single girl had on an ill-fitting outfit. It was just bad. A diaper booties everywhere, you know, because they all got Brazilian butt lifts. It oh, just yeah. looked horrible. Yes. <laughs> and I'm booties. just like, and then to make it even worse, she had one of her, probably one of her worst baby daddies, uh, DJ Lewis, DJ her party. Now, that may not seem like a real big deal, but remember a season and a half ago, they thought that he gave her chlamydia and oh. he doesn't do very well with taking care of their child. Oh. Yeah, but hey, he must still be a hell of a DJ because he was there. Is his, she, is his name actually DJ or does he just No, his name DJ? is Lewis. Okay. okay. Yes. I just had to ask. So uh, there's actually uh, on Instagram, on her Instagram story, he's DJing and doing his thing. And uh, she's all grinding up here. I'm like, bitch, you're going to need antibiotics just from <laughs> grinding on him. Okay? Just like, what is wrong? With and like so many people got upset about that. They're like, why is she doing this? She's going to be pregnant again by this dude who has a hard enough time taking care of one kid. But I just, look, you don't take care of my kid. That means that is the ultimate disrespect to me. I don't want to have shit to do with you. But I think that was the pettiest shit that I've seen on Team Mom. That is incredibly petty. Yes. I mean, just when you're looking, it was really cute, the setup and decor, because it's all pink. But then you start seeing some of the words on it. I beat you, ho. <laughs> that is the high. I petty. want. Where my money at? All kinds of shit. <laughs> just like, <laughs> yes. I'm like, 
that's a level of petty that you know what that's petty goals I, I can roll with that i can roll with that i'm still poor so i'm not a, i'm not willing to spend money on shit like that but the fact that she did was pretty impressive yeah mm -hmm. she spent should have spent a little bit more time on the dress that she got because i was, <laughs> Just whenever you guys, if you go to like Team Mom Shade Room and things like those kind of Instagram pages, you can see just, it was just bad. Mm. It's a lot of bad white girl booties trying did, to have black girl booties. And it just didn't work. Did you expect a whole lot from a group of people that would have a I hate you bitch party? Like, you know what? Dealing with a I'll stop you right there. I see the way they're dressed on the show <laughs> with cameras rolling 24-7. So I should show. not have had high expectations at all. <laughs> okay, speaking of diaper booties, designer <laughs> Bob Mackie Hashtag. went on the record to say that he was not happy about Kim Kardashian trying to squeeze her big ass into the dress that he designed for the Marilyn Monroe. He said that no one should ever wear that dress. And here's the thing. I 100% agree with Bob, but she actually didn't even wear it. The bitch, they had to tie a portion of it so that it would fit over her butt. So all of her butt was out. She had on some skims uh, <laughs> from her own line. <laughs> you can see where they had to, it was not gonna fit over her butt. So that is why she had that white fur coat on to cover up that section. And as soon as she did the red carpet, the bitch had to go change because she couldn't breathe. <laughs> she could wow. not breathe. And I just feel as though the Kardashians, no matter how successful they are, they will continuously try to be other people. Oh, yeah. That is just what they are. You, yeah. you know, Kim got her hair colored uh, blonde. I was like, Kim, okay. I don't want to know what kind of hoops and bounds and what kind of money you had to pay to even get access to Marilyn's uh, dress. But I'm sure it was a pretty penny. But you wanted to be blonde like Marilyn. Why didn't you just get a lace front? Because you, her hair looks toe up and had the audacity to put it in a little bitty bun. <laughs> really, Kim? On the red carpet at the Met Gala with a little bitty bun and a dress that doesn't fit? That's some hood shit right there. You know <laughs> what I mean? So, yeah, I, I think as Bob, and you cannot go against what Bob Mackey says because all the gays will be at your front door whooping your ass because Bob Mackey, I mean, Bob Mackey designs for share. He designed for RuPaul. I mean, he's legendary. And he was like, mm, mm, I don't, that, that little brown skin girl, This I did not design this for you. I, he he designed this, the dress, which Marilyn Monroe hardly fit in herself. Right. But he designed it for her body. And it's iconic. Yeah. It's just, it's iconic. It is iconic based on a person who actually had talent. <laughs> That's the most offensive part is that here it is. The Kardashians don't have talent. No. I mean, you get to wear Marilyn Monroe's dress because you can afford to rent Marilyn Monroe's dress. That is different from someone saying, Kim is so just everything. Will you please wear this Marilyn Monroe dress? In 50 years, do you think anybody's going to say, and look on the red carpet, it's whoever who's wearing Kim Kardashian's dress from 1999 or whatever. 2010. No. Yeah, exactly. And since Kanye, I mean, and it, it really hurts me to say this, but since Kanye hasn't been around, their fashion has actually gotten worse, <laughs> which that's pretty bad because, you know, was it last year or the year before Kim went to the Met Gala dressed as a Dementor from Harry Potter? Okay. <laughs> it was all black. Her, she, I can't even remember how many inches long her hair extensions were, but she was dressed as a, as a Dementor or a Shadow, either one of them. I don't know. But that actually was more edgy than what she attempted to do when she wore this Marilyn Monroe dress. That's just my opinion. And my, my opinion only counts to me, James, a couple of animals. And maybe a few of you guys, but that is what I think. When we get back from this break, we will have Indy Treadwell from Love After Lockup. I can't wait. The Libra Lounge with Keisha. The Libra Lounge with Keisha. Welcome back to the Libra Lounge with Keisha. I'm so super excited. I've got my chakras. I've got my oils. I've got my tail card deck over here because we have the star of Love After Lockup, Miss Indy. Hi guys. I'm so excited to have you because this was a 
insane season it was. of love at the lockup. I mean, and I got I got to I got to tell you the truth. I go I walk around my house and month fungo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And I was gonna make it until I saw all the ingredients and all the shit that you had to do. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna make no more fungo, but I'm gonna keep saying my fungo. It's a lot, but you know what? You can go to like a little Spanish restaurant and get you some. It's really good. That's the only way I'm gonna get it is if I go to a restaurant and get yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> all right, so Indy, introduce yourself to the Libra Lounge audience. Hi, my name is Indy. I was on Love Dorn Lockup and Love After Lockup. Yes, which I loved how they did that back to back because sometimes they'll like do a season and then we got to wait like months and like I'm like a crackhead about love after like I'm like oh I'm feening so that mm -hmm. worked out perfectly and I love that they continued your story yeah because we're like is that all that we're gonna get like I have questions I need answers okay so what made you decide to have your relationship documented on television Actually, it's funny because it's like, at, like that was never like my plan. Like we actually went like viral on TikTok and then they reached out to us. So I didn't even know okay. about the show prior to like actually being asked to be on the show. So I had to do my research afterwards. But I was just like, you know what? It seems like we're going to make it. Like it seems like everything is like on the up and up. So like, do you want to do it? And he was like, yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? It will be financially beneficial and give you a foot in for like, you know, when you're out. Of Jay. Okay. So that's okay. why I wanted to do it. So how much do y'all make? Can so I think make? it depends on, I'm not sure if you could say or not. I think it, but okay. I think if you Google it, you can see It'll, cause, it. Because yeah. uh, if it's the price is like, I'm about to divorce my whole husband and <laughs> then get prisoner. I'll be like, I'm going to get some veneers, a Brazilian, a Tommy gun, <laughs> all of that. Be like, James, I'll get with you later on. But for right now, we just don't have to, I don't know. Or you're going to have to commit a crime and go to prison and we continue the relationship. Whatever. I'm trying to get a check from WeTV. That's Here it. Okay. So what was it about Harry that made you just want to risk it all much, much, much against your family's advice? Um, I feel like at that time we just were super close. Like we, it's like different. Like for, like for people, it seems like it went fast. But for people that's talking to people that's incarcerated, it goes super slow because it's like you're talking every single day throughout the day. Like you're talking, like having deep conversations and mm. like you're really getting to know that person like deep, deep on the inside. Whereas, you know, when you're out in the real world and you're dating and stuff like that, it, it's not happening like that. So, okay. Um, I feel like, you know, I felt like I knew him and like we got to know each other on a deeper level and it seemed like it was going somewhere. So, well... We all saw your family. Yes. So were you nervous to tell them that you were dating someone in prison? Um, a little bit. Like, I feel like I had to start off small with them because I think I was like, I think I started off saying like, oh, I got a pen pal, like, you know, and then it went from like a pen pal to like, oh, like we're talking. And then it went from that to like, he's my boyfriend. So I kind of like paced them. But also, they just know I do, like, crazy shit like this all the time. Like, I just do crazy impulsive shit. So it's just like, at this point, they just like, girl, like, you know. <laughs> because I kind of picture myself like, what would everybody think if I came downstairs one day and was like, uh, so I just want y'all to know, I met my spiritual husband. <laughs> Currently, he's incarcerated. They'd be like, if you don't get out of here with that bullshit right now. <laughs> I think they're just so used to my crazy. It just doesn't even matter anymore. Like, they just be like, okay, this is some shit that she wouldn't do, you know. Here's chapter 14. Yes. Yeah. She's dating a prisoner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just add that onto the list. <laughs> okay. So, when you and Harry were talking and, you know, like you said, y'all had long conversations, what were some of the plans that y'all made? for whenever he got released so our plans were of course like to get married to have kids like you know to do the show you know um invest in some stuff um uh, and then just work on like you know pretty much getting our own place and things like of that nature so okay. didn't happen that way though but that was the plan <laughs> so did his family once you met them did they t warn you against dating harry I feel like they had their reservations, but it was weird because to me, it seemed like it was more so concerned for him than for me. Like, I think they really? kind of, 
like, oh, maybe she's desperate because at that time, I, you know, I was 29 or whatever. They're like, oh, she's 29 with two kids. Like, maybe she's just desperate or maybe she's just not used to being with a good looking guy. And I'm just like, oh, wow. have you seen been- your family? You, right. you know what like, good looking means. Okay. And then, like, I was like, have they seen my baby daddies? Because I have. Yeah, you know, we want to see them. Like, you know. <laughs> John, I was like, Harry is just like, you know, he's on the list of good looking men. Like, I've never not dated somebody that was fine. So I was just like, right. right. I mean, I can understand their viewpoint with, hey, here's this chick who's 29, she's got kids, and here's Harry who's 23 in prison. I mean, as a viewer, we were kind of, I have to admit, we were like, um, he seems pretty young. And then you're also, you're always supposed to say, whatever age they were when they went to prison is the same age they are yeah. mentally, maturity-wise. Right. When they come out. It took, like, a little while for him to get there because, like, he was so much, like, so mature. Even my mom, like, at first she had, like, her reservations and stuff, but even he started to win her over, like, and she was like, okay, like, you know, he seems like, you know, the verdict is still out. I got to see what he's like when he gets out, but he seems like he has his head on his shoulders. Like, he, like y'all both want the same things and stuff like that. Yes. Which out just came when he kind of got to the halfway house and he was able to turn right and left and everywhere, and he's like, ooh, like, but, you know, he was very, very mature at first. Okay, so... Did have you did you watch your season of Love During Lockup and Love After Lockup? Yes. Okay. So how many red flags do you think you missed after watching it? Um, I feel like it's probably definitely was some red flags, but I feel like, you know, with TV sometimes they don't always include like the good. Like we only see the True. bad. So it's just like I feel like if it was if they were showing as much of the good as they were showing the bad, people would have been like, Oh, okay, I understand why she's acting this way. Okay. And then of course they left stuff out, like, um, which is, you know, entertainment purposes, but like yeah. during the halfway house time, we actually were seeing each other, like as quiet as as it was kept, like we was seeing each other, like we had had yeah. sex, like I had, yeah. uh, first I went out by myself a couple of times. I went out there by myself, spent time with him alone to see like how we vibe and stuff. Oh. Like yes, and then I brought the kids with me, both my oldest and my youngest, and saw okay. how we vibe with them. And then once I saw like, okay, it looks good. I even met his daughter, which we leave that out. We left that out too. So that was like the shock. Yeah. Like, no. Harry has a baby, and the baby mama is Fatima Spencer. It's uh, Octavia Spencer. Yes, she, she, she does look like her. Yes, she does. She does. What's going on? Okay, because wow, a lot more makes sense now. Yeah. So I was just acting crazy, like, you guys, I was getting dicked down, and, like, you know, and then on top of that, like, you know, I met his kid, he met mine, so it just seemed like we were in the right direction. Okay, because looking at the show, I was like, ooh, no, Coco can't go. What's, I said, like, James, can you look up Yolanda's phone number? Can Coco can, uh-uh, Coco needs to stay in Maryland. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Like, yes. I, I'm glad you are able to explain that. Okay, how soon after Harry's release did things start going south? How was that? Coco, say hi and then say hi. Hey, Coco! Come say hi. Everyone, Coco just snuck up. She's like, wait a minute, huh? Hi, okay. baby. How are you? All right. She's heard my name. <laughs> okay, so I have to finish this interview. Go, 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 go. I'm coming. Aww. Close She's the like, door. I said my name, so I felt the need to make an appearance. An appearance. She definitely did. Okay, so how long before, you know, things just started going bad? I feel like... Probably like probably a month after he touched down, like I just start seeing like little things. I was like, hold on, like because he had so his Instagram name used to be my name. It was Indie's World. Oh, oh. Was Indy's World. yeah, and he used to post me and stuff like that. And I used to know like everybody he was following. I had his passwords and stuff like that. And so when he started getting a little secretive and changing stuff, and then I was like, hold on, this girl is new. Like, who is this? And it was. Right. Tech- um, and I'm just like, and he was like, nah, just somebody from the halfway house, like, she just followed me or whatever the case is. And I'm just like, hmm. hmm. And then, like, as time start progressing, I'm just like, oh, something is like, my intuition was spotty right. was definitely tingling because I was like, you're, you're putting a brace on stuff because I had filled out for uh, our marriage license. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, and we were supposed, we had um, 90 days to pick up the license and then 60 days after picking up the license to get married. 
And mm-hmm. so he gave me all the information to get that done. And we was, at that time it was COVID, so we had to do everything through Zoom. Okay. When we scheduled the date, he ended up changing his mind. So I was just like, hmm. Like, it just was something was off with that. Right. And then it was also like his, almost like his sister's reluctance almost to like kind of get to know me and stuff like that. So I was like, do they know something that I don't know? Right. So I feel like that's when I started realizing like, okay, something is off. But I just tried to give him like the benefit of the doubt. I was just like, okay, let me just wait. If I see something, then okay. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, and maybe it's just something that he has to get out his system since he's been locked up for so long. Yeah. yeah. You know, I tried to have like patience and understanding, but he just took it too far. Yeah, it was a couple of times I was ready to fight him. I ain't gonna even lie. Uh, listen, like, the old me would have threw some hands, but like <laughs> the older me, the older me was just like, you know, I got stuff to lose now. Like I have kids, but right. like if you would have known me back when I was like 18, 19, 20, like I did not care. Like I would have been throwing right. him. I would have had to drag him and her. Like everybody would have been getting dragged. And if the sisters would have jumped in, they would have been getting it too. So, right? <laughs> so, okay, I got to throw this in real quick, because a lot of people were just thought that it was hilarious that you have a spiritual advisor that you put so with. I do too, okay? Yes, um, I have my relationship with God. Yes, me too. I also have my relationship with my spiritual advisor, yes. and I have to check in every couple of months, just kind of yes. like, like, you know, what's going on? And, you know, I do know that things will change. But yeah. people were really dragging you about that. I'm like, well, God yeah. damn, is it because we black that they think right. we don't do this? Or what is it? And I think it's all about balance. Because I think people okay. would get the assumption like, oh, because you see a spiritual advisor, you don't believe in God. I believe That's in God. True. For sure. Yeah. Like, but I also believe that God put these people here with top exactly. gifts. And if they can help, then why not? Like, I do yeah. see I realized that, like, you know, things can change because when she was reading me, Harry was on his best behavior. He really did think, like, I'm going to be a husband. I'm going to be a father. Like, I got this cover. And then it just was like that shift happened happened once he got to the halfway house. And then he was like, oh, mm-hmm. no. And he yeah. started changing. But I'm just like, as much as on the show, like, I didn't see her as much as they portrayed it on the show. But well, they had to made it seem like every move you made, you, I got to call a Naris. I got to call a Naris. I, a Naris. Right, they did. Yeah, they did. But it's really more so like every six months, like I'll go to her or if it's like something super big, like wow. I'll go to her. And mostly it's just for confirmation versus yes. you know, telling me what to do because things, yes. I already be knowing what I'm going to do. I just want the confirmation, like, okay, you're on the right path. Well, no, maybe you need to take a different direction. So now you guys know this is how it works. She was okay. not. Thing an hour is every two weeks. No, like, that's a lot of goddamn money. In these okay. Like, I'm like, okay. So when you found out, you know, we saw when you found out that Harry had cheated on you with someone right. at the halfway house, but we were all just assuming it was a girl in the halfway house. We we didn't know it was an employee. Yeah, it was an employee. So when you found out that it was an employee, I mean, the first thing I would have done was try to get her fired. But what did you do? I um, reached out to her and we exchanged words. Like, I, th- I didn't even come at her, like, off a disrespectful tip. I just, like, mm-hmm. I don't know if you're aware, but, like, you know, he is spiritually married. That might mm-hmm. not mean nothing to you, but it means something to me. Like, you know, my kid is involved. Like, I'm moving up there. Like, you know, could you just respectfully fall back? And she was just okay. like, oh, I didn't know anything about you. I'm so sorry. Like, I feel hurt because I've been talking to him for a couple of weeks. I said, says, you've been talking to him for a couple of weeks. I've been talking to him for a year. So right. could you respectfully, like, you know, it's like, I was like, I shouldn't even have to reach out to you. This is something he should be doing. But he gave me the leeway to do so. So just fall back, you know. And she's just like, oh, okay, I'm going to leave him alone. And clearly, you know, she, she did it. No, no. And I okay. honestly think it was because she wanted to be on TV. Now, she'll tell me, like, I didn't want to be on TV, but you signed a contract and then you were on TV. So you did want to be on TV. And then on top of that, like, everybody in the halfway house knew that Harry was on Love Doran because we filmed in front of the halfway house. So everybody in there kind of gave him the royal treatment because they knew okay. he was on TV. So that's something that she knew about him. That's something that was special was that you knew he was on TV and you wanted that clout. You wanted to take my role. It was like single black female type of energy. So, see, this, I like, I love reality TV. I probably watch more reality TV than I do, like, scripted shows. But sometimes we forget, and my husband is quick to remind me, he's like, that person's not surprised because they had to get mic'd up, Keisha. And I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. That, 
but you just explained it perfectly. Yeah. She knew that he was filming for a show. She knew that. She so are, she decided to be a hoe on the show. Yeah. And okay. she did. and it's just like I give now I give Harry most of the responsibility. Like I throw that on him. I give him about eighty percent of the blame, but I do give mm -hmm. her that twenty percent because me and her had multiple conversations about the situation and where we are at. I sent her pictures and everything. And I'm just like, I don't know what he's telling you, but I'm telling you what it is, sis. I'm showing you my ring. I'm showing you like that I'm filling out for a marriage license and stuff like that. So it's just like fall back, but sis was still like determined. So that goes to show me that you want to be on TV. You want to fame, you want to clout. And that's what it is. Okay. Oh, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Like we sometimes need that check as the viewers, like, yeah. That makes perfect sense. It really does. Because all of a sudden, we're like, where did this girl come from? Like, what, what is what is going on? But she wanted that opportunity to be on television. Yes. So. And he's going to shut that down quickly, but he did not. Okay. So I have to ask you, what was it like to live with Lydia? Because I'm not going to lie. Lydia scared me a little bit. I'm like, does she <laughs> smile? Oh, oh my God. God. That one scene when, I think it was when Harry first got out. <laughs> and, uh. <laughs> Y'all, Coco's making another appearance. She's like, I'm about to get my five minutes, okay? okay She's like, are you sure right. the interviewer doesn't have questions for me? Because okay. uh, <laughs> I'm so, in trouble. Uh, so, so there was this one scene when Harry finally got to Lydia's house, and she had her little boy. She just, like, bounced him on that couch. Yeah. Man, we talked about that. We're like, we scared of Lydia. We're not exactly sure why we are, <laughs> but we feel like she could probably slice our throat <laughs> and then go in the kitchen and make some more fungo. She definitely could. I thought I love Lydia. It's so funny. Like, I thought, like, me and Carla, his other sister, I thought that me and her were going to be, like, the best of friends. Like, we were going to be super close. And then I was going to have problems with Lydia. But it's mm -hmm. literally, like, no. I end up being super close with Lydia. And, like, mm -hmm. that is my girl. She actually supposed to be coming down here for Memorial Weekend. Uh, okay. Turn up and stuff like that because she's thinking about moving to Maryland. So, that's and she just had a baby, too. Yeah, she had a baby, yep, and okay. she was thinking about coming down here to live, and I'm just like, yeah, so we just became, like, the best of friends. I feel like I had a relationship with her instead of Harry, like, because we was together, we spent so much time together, we would go on dates together, like, we would go out together and stuff like and that. And they didn't show any of that. I know, and I wish that they did, because me and her had such a good time, like, that is my bestie, like... Okay. Literally love her. The energy is always great. Like now, she she if I do something stupid, she will call me. It's like being sisters. Like when you do something stupid, she would curse me out, call me, curse me out, and be like, "Right, what the fuck is wrong with you?" And then I'd be like, "Uh, -uh bitch." And then like five seconds later, you know, we're back. She's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. What, what you doing? doing? Yes, what you doing? What y'all eat for dinner? Yes. I do like, have my fungo. Where the kids? <laughs> right. Okay. So a lot of fans, which I totally miss this. A lot of fans speculated that you were wearing an ankle monitor when you first went to Lydia's apartment and met her. Is that true? No. And I saw, okay. and it's so crazy. I saw the picture. I said, did somebody put an ankle monitor? <laughs> yeah, because I, I was like, I didn't see it. Did someone sent it to me? They're like, that's an ankle monitor. I'm like. So actually what that was, was um, the mic. So sometimes oh, okay. you like I stuck it down in my leg and then it just slid off and I guess they didn't catch it maybe when okay. they the filming and stuff they didn't catch it but no I've never been in trouble with the law ever <laughs> in my life. Yeah, because when I told uh, one of my friends who also is a podcaster, like girl, I'm about to interview Indy from Love After Like, she goes, "Okay, wait, you <laughs> have to ask her about the ankle monitor." Mm -hmm. And at first, I'm like, "I'm not about to ask her this shit because I don't think it was an ankle monitor." Yeah. Well, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and write it out. So now we know that was not an ankle monitor on Indy. Okay, so other than the cheating, how was the relationship with Harry? And are y'all still in contact? So I feel like other than a cheating, like, I feel like if he wasn't cheating, we would have been good because, like, it's so many moments that y'all don't get to see where he was sweet. Like, we would cuddle. We would watch movies together. Like, he would open the door for me. Like, you know, he would say sweet, romantic things. But then, of course, he was cheating, so he was being ass and not coming home sometimes and stuff like that. But we did. It was like... Uh, if, if for me, the bad outweighed the good because nobody wants to be cheated on. Like, nobody right. wants to live that way. Like, I want you home every single day. But yeah. far, but I'm not going to lie and say that we didn't have good times because we had plenty of good times. Like, we slept together most nights. Like, we cuddled. We watched movies. Like, you know, right. 
he was a gentleman when he wanted to be. He I, he would do Coco's hair, like literally, yeah. like the hit the same hairstyle. He would wear like the braids. He would do that to her, like wow. you know, wow. with the kids together. Like we had like sweet moments, and I just be like, bro, you're ruining it because you're mm -hmm. you won't stop cheating. Like it's it's disrespectful. Like you know. Yeah. But I, and I always say like if I never left Ohio, then she would have still been the side chick, and he would have never moved in with her. Like, but he only moved because she's there and I'm here. So are they still together? So um, yeah, he's living with her now. But oh, okay. as far as like him taking her serious, he doesn't even take her seriously. Like he definitely calls every day. Um, I get messages that like, um, like I got a message on Mother's Day that he was um, in some girls DM. She had sent me messages. Then somebody just yesterday was like, um, "Girl, I follow him on Facebook and he's flirting with all the girls on there." So he's not even taking her seriously. Like I just think that right now at his age and stuff like that, he's yeah. just fun. He's not ready. And I yeah. think with her, like she doesn't demand like respect or like we're not gonna be doing this type of thing. Because for me, like he's gonna hear my mouth. And I'm going right. to see you being wrong. And I'm trying to, like, I want you to grow as a person. With her, it's just like, okay, like, you want to smoke? Okay. You want to drink? Okay. Like, those are your plans for the day? Okay. But for me, I'm just like, no, bro. Like, you need to focus on your child. Like, you need to be doing this yeah. and doing that. And so our energies are different. She's 25. I'm 30. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to, like, I want you to be a man and do man shit. And she's just okay right. with chilling and smoking and not doing anything, you know, that's beneficial right. for his growth. So they're basically like living like two teenagers over there. Literally, because it's not serious. Like I can't say it's serious when, because uh, I think a man who's in a serious relationship is going to cut off his access. He's going to cut off the past. Yeah. He's not going to be talking to other women or in, even entertaining that. So it's right. just, he's not taking her serious too. And it's just funny to me because I know I saw some of the comments and he was like, oh, he never looked at Indy this way or he he really cares about her like no he doesn't care about her either <laughs> like wow 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 okay we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna become right back with indy welcome back to the Libra lounge with keisha i've got miss indy indy how do you say your full name so my name is indy era indy era okay i would say indira yeah, I knew it was wrong. That, yeah, a lot of people say that it's in here. So okay, so the world fell in love instantly with your family. Okay, so when that happens, I have to go. I go into full investigative mode. I'm like, I need to know how many siblings. I, I, I want to know everything. <laughs> so tell us how many siblings you have, because you're a twin. Yes, I'm a twin. Okay, you're a twin, and what are their names? Because everybody knows they. Everybody want to know if, you, if your sisters are single. Everybody wants to know if your brother is single. I'm like, y'all need to sit down somewhere. So <laughs> here's the info, you guys. Yes. She's gonna spill it for us. Yeah, I didn't get to see all the siblings, but I have a twin. My twin's name is Jamar. We're seven minutes apart. We're identical. And then after that, there's my brother John. John yeah. is not single. He's actually in a relationship with this girl named Victoria. Okay. Um, and then after that, it's Londa. That's the one who was on the show that was like mm -hmm. ready to curse Harry's ass out. Yes. Um, and then after Londa, it's Nini. Nini was the one in love dorm when we was at the park scene. At the park. Okay. And then after that is Aaliyah. Aaliyah is the one who was sitting on the couch with the long hair and she's like, oh, her yeah. hair. Yeah. Promise me this, Indy. All her she ever cuts her hair, tell her I want to buy it so somebody can make me a wig with all that. That girl's hair is gorgeous. It's long. Yes, it's gorgeous and it's long. And then the mm -hmm. last person y'all didn't see because she wasn't on the show, her name is Ashanti, and that's number seven. So my mom has seven kids in total. Seven kids, and you cannot tell at all body wise yeah, that exactly. she's had seven kids. Yeah, I know. Now, what was life growing up with Yolanda? Because I'll never forget, like, everyone in the house watches Love After Lock. Love, well, we all watch Love During and Love After. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was recording it because I think my husband and I were out. And my mom called me and said, bitch, girl, <laughs> it's a new black girl on there. And her mama is a motherfucking bounty hunter. I was like, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so what was it like growing up with Yolanda as your mom? Crazy. Like crazy, like she didn't play, like she definitely didn't take no shit. She was always like in our business and like, 
you gotta meet people like you know you gotta chin she gotta chin check them like yeah if you do this like yeah you're gonna have to see me type of thing like she yeah. always has that energy like nobody yeah. messed with her nobody played with my mom like it just definitely was like crazy and then hectic and then just dealing with like all these females and just one boy it was like a lot of estrogen in the house yeah, I bet. Dudes, like so like growing up when my mom was you know not playing i feel like me and my twin for the most part didn't give her hard times but like the rest of them except for my brother let me exclude him because he was a good son but everybody else oh my god headaches headaches, <laughs> headaches. So we saw how much your family was invested in this relationship. Is that pretty typical of them? Yes, definitely. But I think like even more so with him because he was a jailbird. Like I think that they just wanted to make sure like everything was okay. Yeah. So concerned, you know, for me, for Coco and for my oldest Nala. Like okay. they wanted to make sure like, you know, shit was good. And it's just unfortunate for him because it's like when you're on their bad side. It's no getting over it. Like, literally the other day, we're at, like, a wedding, and, like, I forgot what those little things are called, the little things that you blow on, and it just all go. Yeah, huh? yeah so Coco was blowing in it, and she's like, oh, I'm going to make a wish. My mom said, oh, what's your wish? And she was like, I want to see Poppy Daddy. And my mom said, oh, no. Like, she was like, oh, no. And I was like, don't give it to her. Let her have her dreams. Do not catch her dreams. And her then we soon as you turn your back, she's like, Coco. Go get another yeah. one of them little bullhorn things and make another whole wish. Okay? She literally said, if I ever see that y'all get back together, I'm going to make your life miserable. I'll be at your house every day. I'm going to make him very uncomfortable. <laughs> I believe that she's not. I, I detect no lies. Let's just say I that. I believe it. Okay, so <laughs> I can't the scene when your mom is in the car with that. Yes. And it was worse. Like, they cut a lot out of it, a lot out of that. Like, she really read him, told him he was nothing and all that, and he agreed. He was like, no, you're right. Like, I did, you know. I would have agreed with it with whatever the fuck that she, I'm yeah. after that car with Yolanda. What if, if she could have said, hey, you're not Puerto Rican, you black. Yes, ma'am, I'm black. Okay. Right. You that black. part. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, hair, you have feminine yeah. energy. Yes, ma'am, you're right. I have feminine energy. At one point, like, he had got loud with her. Oh, no. Just raised the tone just a little bit. And she said, uh, excuse me? Uh, who you talking to? And he was just like, uh, yeah. Nobody. No, nobody. Like, you know. <laughs> so I like, uh, there's this artist that I like. And uh, he does a lot of artwork of, the, like, the Real Housewives and RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. I want him to recreate that scene where your mom is taking off that hood and she's like what's up what's up that was gangster shit right there it was very bc of her like all the bc people that know they was like it was the what's up for me like the what's up because you know what you fuck with my daughter that's the kind of shit that i'm gonna do too but she was real nice because i would have had a whole gun with me yes Knowing you long longer, she may have had. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can't put everything on TV, you know. Right. Okay. So since you've moved back to to Maryland, how have things been with you and your family? Everything's been good. Like you know, everybody welcomed me back. Like my mom still wants to have that uh, divorce party, um, which we'll probably have in like um, June when my furniture comes. And okay. Then we'll have like a little turn up or whatever the case is. But like everybody's been welcoming and like, oh yeah, bitch, you're back and you're gonna stay back. Don't bring your ass back to Ohio for nothing. Yeah. Like that's it. No more Harry, right? Um yeah. but they know like he's his ass is not going anywhere. Like, unfortunately, like we're not gonna be on those kind of terms, but he's gonna call every like and he does call every day. I don't like it's probably been like ten days since I've picked up a phone call from him, but he calls consistently every day he'll send me that wow. stuff and be like you know i want to talk to coco i miss her like i mean at the least let's co-parent because i do love her and whatever whatever wow he does i mean he got her name tatted on his like underneath on his rib he got her name and nala's name and then right here he has mine so i honestly feel like it's his age yeah and the fact that he's institutionalized yes i think you know? like that therapy Therapy. Yeah, after we saw that scene between uh, him and his mom, 
we were like, whoa, like no one saw that coming. And we could clearly see all the hurt, the pain, everything. I'm like, this kid needs some therapy because I'm sure it may have been some other things that went on in his childhood that he's not even talking about right now. But just the fact that he was institutionalized, like when you come out, you need work. Yeah. The real world is a culture shock for them, yeah. you know? I agree. Right. I think that I knew a lot of stuff like, you know, that he's been through and stuff like that. And I think that's why I had, because so, a lot of people was like, oh, she's stupid. Like, girl, when are you going home? But it's just like, I had a lot of patience because I knew so much like trauma that he suffered. And then I just know that like how he would feel about like abandonment and stuff like that because he did feel like his mom abandoned him and just kind of left in the hands of an abuser. So right. you know, I didn't want to be that because I think I even said it in the show at the end where I was just like, I feel like I'm, I, I'm abandoning him, even though in hindsight, he was abandoning He me. was abandoning you. Yeah, but yeah. I did feel as though like I was abandoning him at that moment. But you know, with some therapy and help now I'm starting to see things differently. Right. But, like I definitely felt like, oh, now I'm gonna be another person in his life that leaves him. Like, but they he pushed you away. Yeah, yeah, but he pushed me away. Like he pushed me to that. Yes. Yes, he did. Uh, a lot of people wanted to know why your oldest daughter was in film. Her name is Nala, right? Yep, Nala. Mm -hmm. So that just was um, a decision that her and, her and our her dad and I came up with. Like we didn't want. Okay. Her. And she's older. You know, it's not cool to like, even though like her friends know, like some of her friends know, and they'd be like, oh my God, your mom was on TV. My mom said, oh, your mom, hi. But like, you know, we, yeah, but we didn't want her, you know, to be getting recognized at school by teachers and stuff. Like, you know, True. it's this, okay. the, she's 11. Like, that's the embarrassing stage. Like, yes, it is. You know, you could blink the wrong way to be like, oh my God, you're not right. Oh my God, you're wearing that? Mom. Yes. Like, you know. Yes. Okay. Now, I totally get it. I totally get it. So are you still seeing Anaris or do you have a new spiritual advisor? So I still see Anaris. Like I go through, like every six months. Um, and like she's like to me, like she'd be on it. Like, you know, I think yeah. that things can change in life. So it's not always set in stone. Yes. But for the most part, like every time I had a feeling or something, it was confirmation. Like, I feel like he's cheating. Girl, he is. And he was mm -hmm. lying. Like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. But then telling his friend, like, ah, I cheated on her. So, right. it's just, you know, she was right in those aspects. Now, was she right about the happily ever after part? No. But we don't know yet. We don't know, but we, that's exactly, we don't know yet. Not that I'm sitting here waiting for him because I'm not. Like, I'm, I'm open to, like, dating and like, you know, just like continuing to heal and work on myself. But we don't know yet because from what he tells me, it's just like, you're my end goal. Like, I really do want to give you all those things that I said I was going to give you when I was in jail. He was just like, I'm just not ready right now. So yeah, just, he's still trying to hold on to you. Keep up. He he's not ready, but he's still that. trying to hold on. So, and that's what it is. It's something to it. Exactly. And that's what I think. Like, no matter if people think, oh, that's crazy. She's stupid. She's that. But it's a reason why he's keeping the foot out of the, in, in, like, in the door. And it's not yeah. because he's using me or he's getting anything from right. me. Because when he met me, I wasn't stable. Like, I wasn't really even stable. Like, I was living with my mom. And then, and so it's like, I really didn't have that much to offer. It was like, we were coming up together. And okay. then, shoot, he was sending me his stimulus money and stuff to spend on myself. Not on him but on like myself and the kids so you know okay. again something that we didn't see didn't hear about or anything like so much more is making sense and i will tell you the as far as the happily ever goes look my husband was crazy at one point in time too and wasn't ready for what i was ready for but he would always keep that i, I told at least yeah. in the <laughs> and we've been married for eight years now we've been together for 13 so there's still hope okay so if you could give advice to 16 year old indy what would you tell her hmm. i would tell 16 year old indy like you know to you know be realistic with your expectations mm -hmm. i would tell her you know just keep striving for success like I would tell her, like, to have some self-worth, to love herself more, to be more confident and assertive, not to let people walk all over her. And I would tell her, like, just wait, sis, because you're going to be on TV. 
Yes, you were. And you, you and your family took over the show. I mean, I'd be like, give me a spinoff. I'm like, I'm a. Y'all do need a spinoff. Spinoff, right? What's that man's name? Matt Sharp. Make it happen. But I want to. I want a show too, uh, Matt. If you just gonna be giving shows, I, I want one too. Okay. <laughs> okay. So tell us, tell our audience how they can follow you on social media. If you have any upcoming gigs or anything and everything you want us to know. So it's Indie underscore Love Doran Lockup on all platforms. So that's TikTok, Twitter, um, and Instagram. And then it's Indiera Tread Treadwell on uh, YouTube. I'll be starting a YouTube channel soon. Okay. Um, because I definitely want to like keep people posted. I might do like Q and A's, makeup things, that kind of stuff. I want to definitely yeah. do an apartment tour. Um, and then I will say, Indy, your makeup look a whole lot better than it did during the season. Yes, I agree. Yes. Like, it's just, and it's so funny because it's just like everybody was like, Wait, she do makeup, her makeup look a mess. And I'm just like, Y'all don't realize that, like, literally, we're waking up like at six in the morning, so I'm rushing to just do anything, and then we have to film all day, right? Just for my together y'all y'all cannot see her, but she is all the way together. She is blonde, the makeup was perfection. Okay. Oh. Because I was like, well, makeup artist. I'm like, where? Okay, I see yeah. it today. Okay, I see it today. It's just like, she I see it. I yes. wants to do it, you know? <laughs> you look great. Okay, so you've got the YouTube channel coming up. Do yeah. you think that you will film any more? Like, do you think you and Harry would do like a life after locked up or something like that? So it's so funny because they definitely did ask for us to do life after. But I turned it down because I was just like, I don't want to be in anybody's love triangle. That's not okay. Now, okay. if they offer us a spinoff, then y'all definitely will see me on a spinoff. But as far as going um, life after, no, unless it was just me and Harry and we can leave Terry out of it. Mm, she ain't going nowhere no time soon. She's going to try to hold on for us. Hold on. She she all his braids. Yeah, because she thinks that she's going to get somewhere. But it's just like there's no, it's Envy and Harry, not Child, you you the side chick. You need to go sit down in the corner and be quiet. That's what side chicks are That's supposed to do, right? Yeah. She's supposed to be quiet. Yes. She's not supposed to be posting any pictures. She's no, at, you know, shame, 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 shame. Yes. Yes. She has zero. She has zero. Like she really don't care. And then, and that could be like that twenty five year old mentality where it's just like I don't give a shit. Like I took her man type of thing. But it's like, did mm -hmm. you really? If he's still right. calling me every day, like I went home in January. Mm -hmm. And he's been calling ever since January. And like, I think as immediately, once I left, it just hit him. He was like, wait, you really gone? Like, you really yeah. left? Like, his sister was calling me like, girl, he is freaking out. Like, he didn't really think that she was going to go anywhere. Right. And, I'm glad you made that move. And me too, because it's just like, he has to learn to like live without me. And so that's why he's yeah. trying to keep his, his toe in the water. So how long Terry's going to last? I don't think long. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'll let her live out her fantasies because it's, it's it's not gonna last that that long. That's just a place for him to stay. That's how <laughs> I look at it. He said that on the show. I was like, you should watch the show because he definitely said he definitely said that. Like, and then said like, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen with me here because I got enough love to go around. Like that just goes to show you, like he's not even taking her seriously. But I guess. Wow. She well, good luck, Terry. <laughs> 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 Indy, this was so exciting. This was a great. I love. Oh, I was. You just cleared up so much, and I see you completely differently after just getting a chance to talk to you. I'm like, yeah. Okay, I understand everything that she did right now. So, thank you. We are following you. I cannot wait to see you continue to blossom, and I wish you all the best luck and send you all the good vibes. Tell your mama I said hey. I okay. All right. We're good. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me go. Bitch, please. You be rolling down the street, telling stories. Bitch, you never tell the truth. Bitch, please. Everybody know you lying, bitch, because all you do is lie. I am on a level 100 high after that interview. Like she answered, she just cleared up so many things 
and reminded us that we're watching reality TV where there's a camera crew, crew filming for hours and hours and hours and they have to edit it down to these little bitty segments for a one hour show that you're sharing with how many other couples? Oh yeah, not only that, she uh, helped us understand the fact that they're they're spinning a narrative for TV. Like, right. That ain't the story. Yes. And if you're like me, you're a reality TV junkie. You'd be like, ooh, I know that's happening right now. I wonder if I heard from Florida, Ohio, if I could catch them at this halfway house. Yeah, I need a reality check when it comes to reality TV because I get so invested that I forget that it is for entertainment. So thank you, Indy. Uh, come back to the show anytime you want to. Tell your mom, Yolanda, I want to interview her. I think that would be just a kick-ass interview. I think so. With her mom, Yolanda. I'm on try for that. Okay, get that, make that happen, Producer James. All righty, it is time for the Bitch Please of the Week from the Libra Lounge with Keisha. Okay, so this past Saturday, Pete Fuckboy Davidson uh, closed out his career on Saturday Night Live. And that is peculiar to me because I didn't even know about Pete Davidson. I don't even know how many years he was on Saturday Night Live. There's a few. Has he been on any other shows other than Keeping Up with the Kardashians or in any <laughs> movies? Um, yeah, he was in that uh, was it King of Staten Island movie that just came Th out That's recently. one. Is there uh, two? He was in The Suicide Squad. Remember? For four minutes. Well, for just, four he, minutes. And I think asked. I may be giving him a little bit more credit by saying four minutes. I mean, he immediately was killed. I didn't even realize that was Pete. Oh, I was yeah. like, who's that big goofy little guy with them big ass pink <laughs> lip boy? Okay. I don't we, track his career, so I don't know. Okay, there you go. Yeah. We don't track his career other than I only know Pete Davidson from whenever he was dating Ariana Grande. And then when she left his ass, he was like, I'm not going to share I'm not going to share my life. I'm going to leave a note in my dressing room. So, like, there was at one point... Everyone, all the producers and directors from Saturday Night Live had to kind of shut these down and find Pete's goofy ass because he was so heartbroken over Ariana Grande. That was the first time that I ever heard of this person. I was like, he's on Saturday Night Live? Oh, oh, okay. And then from there, you know, kind of heard he had a big dick, which is the only reason I believe Kim Kardashian <laughs> is with him right now. You should have kept your career on Saturday Night Live. Have you not heard of the Kardashian women and what they do to men? They're about to chew your ass up. You are not Travis Barker who can take a chewing up and still come back out on top. That's not going to happen to you. You think you wanted to do something to yourself after Ari skinny ass Ariana Grande. Skinny ass. What do you think he's going to do when Kim breaks up with him? Oh, I can only hope. <laughs> yes, I mean... <laughs> I kind of hope it speeds up because, I mean, celebrity news and gossip has been a little bit slow here lately, and I think that that would be fantastical for there to be a break. It's going to happen. So what are our options here? We've got he could, uh, you know, do like a Lamar Odom, you know, drug-fueled, stripper-fueled binge. Yeah, he's going to do that. He's going to do that. Uh, a full relapse. Yeah, I think he will do that. Um, now, granted, before any of you sensitive ninnies over there, I'm not hoping this happens to him. No. These are just slight predictions that we have for him. These are just contingency. Plans. Yeah, we're just basing it on history. Yeah, yeah heard, there's a pattern history. here. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think anything as far as like suicide. There may be an attempt. There may be a. Well, he he threatened suicide with Ariana Grande. Oh, he threatened it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that motherfucker jumping off a building. I think so too. <laughs> I, He's I gonna think... jump off a building into. A garbage truck. And you know what I think? I think he is going to be live. I think he's going to do it live. Oh, he'll stream it. Yeah, I think oh, he'll yeah. live stream it most definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> don't be sending us any DM saying that we're uh, promoting suicide because we are not. We're only poking fun of rich white people right now. So <laughs> let us just do it. So I'm giving him the bitch please because he's so in love with Kim right now. He's not even focusing on his career. He thinks he's going to marry Kim. Mm. Yeah, which he might. It ain't going to last, just no. like none of the other 14 marriages that she's had. You know, he's even, like, got a tattoo um, that's dedicated to her kids. Yeah, that is the—well, we've talked about it so many times on the show. Tattoos 
are the kiss of death the kiss to of relationships. Death. So, so oh, once again, Travis Barker is going to survive because his whole body is a tattoo. Right. So he, I think he he's good to go. He added one. I think this is that relationship is going to be the most successful relationship out of all of them. I yeah, think that one be. will actually last because be. Travis is a real G. I've always liked Travis Barker. But I don't like bitch ass Pete Davidson, so I'm gonna give him the bitch please of the week. Thank you guys for tuning in. So 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 sorry that we have not been releasing anything, but we're gonna be back on track. And just stick with us. Tell us, tell a friend about us. Follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. You can listen to the show on iTunes, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, TuneIn app, a laughable app. And is there anything else, producer James? That's it. That's it. Alrighty, stay sucker free. It's the Neighbor Lounge. The leader now. Ooh.